Hi YouTube, this is Patrick and this is my review of The Grey, which I just saw last night, the new Liam Neeson movie. Um, uh, first I'll just say I'll do a review of this and I'll get into spoiler stuff later on in the review. Um, and I'll say that I'll be doing spoiler stuff uh, this way. Anyone that's watching, if they haven't seen the movie yet, they can turn this off. Um, Alright, so I saw it last night. It was fantastic. If it had come out last year, it would be right near the top of my favorite movies from last year. Um, I hope I see ten other films better than it this year, um, because if I do, it's going to be a great year uh, for movies. Uh, it really was that good. Um, I will say that the marketing for the movie isn't really doing it um, justice, because it's marketed as a typical Liam Neeson January release, with films like Taken and like Unknown, two you know decent movies that, uh, especially Taken, that are just like fun, you know time wasters or whatever um but this movie uh is a lot more than that uh it's directed by joe carnahan who he made uh, the film narc i don't know what year it was it was a long time ago maybe 10 years maybe longer uh really gritty cop drama since then he made smoking aces which is just ridiculous and uh the a-team um which again compiling neeson's january releases with um the A-Team director, I didn't, you know, I, you figured you're going into it, it's going to be Liam Neeson fighting wolves, and, um, it really isn't. It's, uh, basically he plays a guy, uh, that works at an oil rig, uh, site down, uh, I don't even know if they said where, but somewhere in the Arctic, and, um, he has to keep wolves at bay that are, that come to maybe pick off someone that's working, he's like a sharpshooter and you can shoot him. Um, anyway, they're in a plane crash, uh, when the job is finished, and they wake up, and there are, I think, about seven or eight guys, um, and they're slowly tracked by wolves, pretty much. That's pretty much the movie. Uh, so they're fighting the cold, the wolves, each other, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, it sounds simple, but, uh, the performances by the actors, the amount of time it's given, is given to the characters, is just, it's just really well done. Um, you know, the, uh, Neeson, I guess I'll just start with Liam Neeson. Um, his best work is, uh, you know, Schindler's List, which everyone, uh, would know, but I gotta say this gives it a run for his money. And, uh, he has this backstory in the film where something happened with his wife, where you don't really know, um, he keeps having these dreams about her, you don't quite know if she's dead, or if, you know, he just did something to screw up the relationship, or whatever. Uh, but the point is that she's not in his life anymore, and you can tell he draws this from his real-life, uh, drama, where he lost, uh, his wife a few years ago in a freak accident, um... And it was actually a little hard watching him sometimes in this movie because you can tell that, you know, some of the stuff you were seeing on the screen was pretty real. Some of the grief and everything like that, uh, and that, in a you know, in a very sad way, added to the uh, to the experience uh, of his performance. The rest of the cast, especially when everyone when it's down to like you know six seven guys or whatever, they're not at first. You can pretty much I would I wouldn't be able to recite any of their names. Uh, for you right now. In fact, um, they seem at first like cardboard cutouts, but you get to pretty much know each each one. You know, there's the the quirky, funny one. There's the asshole. Uh, there's uh, the nice guy. There's the black guy. There's uh, and Dermot like Moroni. Um, that's it, pretty much. Uh, although some of the other guys, I know um, one of them was in Three Ten to Yuma. Um, and the uh, the black actor, he's going to be on Game of Thrones uh, next year. And he was really good in this, so I'm looking forward to seeing him on that show. Um, I'm trying to think of any of the other guys. Um, but yeah, all their performances just were, were, were just solid. Um, they gave everyone, you cared about everyone, to the point where if they were going to get picked off, you weren't just saying, oh shit, like here comes a wolf or whatever. You were worried about them, and, um, you know, they gave the movie some extra weight and extra edge to it. Um, it was also beautifully shot, it was a little grainy, uh, which I guess he might have shot it not in 35mm, I don't know, 
um, but it made great use of the uh, of the cold and the winds, and it just looked like a horrifying ordeal or yeah ordeal to go through. And the plane crash sequence isn't done with a lot of like CGI on the outside of the plane. They do it all from the inside, and it's just awful. It's absolutely horrible to sit through. Uh, once, like the plane crash in the movie, the our our audience was just like just cursing and just going like holy shit, just over and over again. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to think. Uh, so I am recommending this completely. Uh, I will also mention, I guess I I've heard of two complaints, two major complaints in the movie. One is the use that wolves don't do what the wolves in this movie do. Um, and what uh, apparently that's true that wolves will never really attack you, but the movie doesn't make wolves have to be the be these monsters. I mean, the characters clearly say that wolves stay within like a three hundred mile radius of their den and hunt within a thirty mile radius. So if you're in that radius, and if you're you know if you given that and given with I won't go into it, but given with at least by the end of the movie if you, movie if you put everything together you can completely understand why the wolf would be would be you know doing what they were doing even if that's not realistic you can understand it from you know just a narrative perspective just like the idea is like yes these things would be doing this because I'd be doing the same damn thing um, so uh, you know if some maniacs go out there and start shooting you know endangered species like wolves that's you know that that's horrible but that's that's not the movie's fault and um, so I just think that criticism is, and I'm I'm a huge animal lover and everything like that, but um, you know you got to have some some uh, perspective here. Uh, so I hope that's not why. So if that's a problem that you you don't want to see, I think that's the idea that you should go into it. If that's one of the maybe things you you know one of the reasons you wouldn't want to go see the movie. Um, otherwise, it's extremely gory. Great use of profanity in the movie, where somehow even though it was had a lot of bad language, it didn't feel over the top. It felt just like natural. Uh, it felt like I'd be saying the same damn thing um, whenever these guys were talking. Um, and yeah, I just... Uh, I love the hell out of it. Um, complete and solid, like 9 out of 10, grade A, whatever. Um, like I said, I hope, I hope I see 10 other great movies this year. If this is an indication of 2012 at the movies, it's going to be a hell of a year. Um, so yeah, and uh, as far as the ending goes, I will just say this, and this is not a spoiler, but um, you might be getting something more ambiguous than you think. I don't think so. I didn't think it was very ambiguous at all. I thought the ending of this movie was pretty final. Um, but you know, maybe I'll just go into that in the spoiler thing. But let's just say, you know, I think I would just tell you, just be prepared for... Um, not what the marketing shows you. Uh, take what, If you've seen a trailer or a commercial for this movie, just put it out of your mind completely. Um, okay, on to the, the spoiler part. Um, okay, so shut this off if you don't want to hear the spoilers. And, okay. Alright. Um, first of all, I'll just say that um, the deaths of all the characters in the movie and all of them uh, were just brutally done, uh, whether it was a wolf attack or a drowning or the guy or Mulroney climbing um, and just falling. Uh, they were all just really well done, kept it fresh every single time. Um, I love I, I loved the guy just choosing to sit there and uh, uh, just like watch the, the, the nice like scenery and just like slip away maybe that way. Um, and in fact, that is the point of the wolves in this movie and of the ending of the movie and of what Neeson's character does toward the beginning uh, and the poem that's in this movie. The beginning of the movie, Liam Neeson's character goes to kill himself and just he's about to pull the trigger he hears a wolf howling in the distance so he doesn't do it. Now the big discussion in the movie about whether, you know, he's pissed off at God for the things that have happened to him. Um, he's, like, abandoned him and everything like that. And there's some really great discussions that they have about, you know, that it doesn't exist, and they really... And these guys, and especially Neeson's character, there's no reason for him to believe in 
that really God exists because he's just had an awful life and there's no answers. Uh, and a great scene, by the way, where he just screams at you know at God for what's happened to him. Um, but in the sense, I think the movie pretty much is that poem where it basically says, "Look, if you're gonna go out, um, you're gonna go out fighting." And his whole point, he was going to kill himself in a very easy way. This wolf howls as if, no, your fate is meant to be determined elsewhere. Um, and he naturally ends up in the den of the wolves. Which is, again, why the wolves would attack them, because they're moving closer to the damn den the whole time, instead of away. So they're leading them in the complete wrong direction the whole movie. So he ends up in the den. And he ends up at this final moment where, basically, he remembers the poem, and that this is what you have to do. You have to live and die on... You're live and die, like today. Live and die in your last day, and um, I just thought it was beautifully done. Um, it wasn't ambiguous at all. It wasn't like a Sopranos cut to black ending because the Sopranos cut to black ending. I mean, you could sit there and go, "Oh, the guy shot him." Like, "Oh, they sat there, finished their dinner, and then did like whatever." Uh, this it was just like he recited the poem about living and dying on this day, which is what he just did. Um, even if he won the fight against the, the alpha wolf, he wasn't going to make it out of there. So, that's it. The point of it is that instead of going out with a shotgun, with a you know bullet to your head, you lived on your last day, and you fought to live. And that's the point. And uh, that's why, I mean, or you just choose your way to go out. And you choose the best way possible. That's, guy that, that's why the guy wants to, when he, you can say he gives up, but he's just sitting there watching the scenery because he says what am I going to do I'm going to go home and just you know do nothing I got this here and this is how I want to go I go out want to go out that's the point and I loved it I loved the ending the audience didn't seem too happy with it um but you know what can you do uh anyway all right that's enough for this uh if there's something I missed I'll put it in the comment or something like that but uh great movie absolutely great movie um definitely go check it out Alright guys, later.